Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to look at some measures of variation when we are having statistical data. And my data here is for two groups of students that took a quiz because I thought, you know, quiz and students is easy to understand when you are a student. And uh, I have made a histogram for both sets of data. Here is the one group and over there is the other. You can see just by looking at these that there is more variation in this group. The data items, the values are more spread out and here they are more concentrated, okay? But we also want to have something we can calculate, some numbers that will tell us that this that over there varies more than this set of data. And we're going to look at three such measures today, range, interquartile range and mean absolute deviation, also called MAD or MAD for short. Okay, now range is the easiest. It is basically just the difference between your minimum and maximum value. So you look at the minimum and the maximum, 12 and 17 in this case, and subtract. And so that is the range. So this is 5. Over here, minimum 8, maximum 20, so the range is 12. However, range is not always the best measure of variation because sometimes in your data you might have an outlier, what is called an outlier. Let's say, for example, that here we had these students and then there was one student who got four points, okay? If, if this one student was added here as four points, then that would make the range to be 13. However, that kind of data item is called an outlier because it differs so greatly from the rest of the group, okay? It is like a totally different, as if it didn't really belong to the group. So range is very sensitive to outliers. Let's look at these others too. Interquartile range. You use it with median. In fact, you have to calculate the median to find the interquartile range. And what it is, is basically we will divide this data into quarters or into fourths. And then we will take the first and third quarter point and subtract and find the range here, find the difference. For that, we first need to find the median. To find the median, that's the middlemost number, right? Or if there's an even number of values, then I take the average of the two middlemost items here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means the eighth item here is my median. There. Okay. Here's median. And now I look at the first half of the data here and find the median of this. And that will give me the lower quartile, okay? So here's, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven items. I'm not including the median here. I'm just looking at this lower half of the data, these seven items, and I take the median of that, or the middlemost number of these seven, which is the fourth number here. So this is the first quartile or the lower quartile point. And then over here, again, I have seven items here, and I take the medium of those seven, which would be the fourth, fourth item, which is this one here. It's called the third quartile. Median is the second quartile. So now the data is divided into four parts. And the interquartile range is when I subtract this and this, 13 and 14. It is only one. And of course, that is indicating how close together the data items are. Over here, we did the same. Let's count how many we have. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20 this time. So the median, okay, half of the data items is 10 and 10. The median will be the average of the 10th and 11th item here. 10 and 11, both are 14s, okay? The median is here, it is 14. And then the first quartile, here I have 10 items. And uh, so it will be the average of the fifth and sixth item. Five and six, it's 12 here. 
Okay. There's 12 in here. This one would be 15.5, okay? Like that. And now the interquartile range would be this, uh, the difference between these two, 15.5 and 12. So we get 3.5. Whereas here, the median was 13 and the interquartile range was one. Okay, so number-wise, it is agreeing with our, what we can see in the graph that that is more spread, that data is more spread. Now, the mean and mean absolute deviation. I have already calculated the mean. Here is 13.6, here is 14.2. So now we go to mean absolute deviation, this difficult monster word. Basically what it means is how far are these data values on average from the mean? We calculate it by calculating first the difference of each value to the mean. And then we take the average of the differences, okay? So, for example, here, 12 and 13.6, they differ by 1.6, right? And then 13 and 13.6, the difference here is 0 0.6, okay? Then 14 and 13.6, they differ by 4 tenths. And here they differ by 1.4. And lastly, then, 3.4. And these differences are always taken as positives, okay? You cannot take some of them as negative numbers because then they would can cancel, each, cancel out with the positives. So everything is taken positive. You add these together and divide by however many there are. You take the average or the mean of those. That's why it says mean here or average, okay? And the word absolute refers to the fact that we are taking the absolute difference or the absolute deviation from the mean, instead of taking some of them negative and some of them positive. And I have calculated all this now beforehand, so we don't have to take time adding them all up and dividing. And the mean absolute deviation for this set is 1.04. The mean was 13.6. Over here, we do the same. Look at the difference between each data value and the mean. Okay, so here we get 5.6.2, then 1.2, here's 0 0.2, then 15 and 14.2 is 0 0.8, the difference is 0 0.8, the positive difference again. It would be 1.8, 2.8, 3, I mean, I'm sorry, 4.8, and 5.8. All right, so now that list is ready, and then you would add those up and divide by 20, however many there are, and I calculated it, and it is 2.26. And the mean was 14.2. All right. Now our calculations are ready and we can now compare not just the graphs but also the numbers and in these two groups if we look at the median the median is less here than there the mean also is less here than there so on average that group did better on the test because the mean and median both are a little bit more however in here the results varied way less than over there which we can see from the interquartile range from the range and from the mean absolute deviation. All of those measures are less here than over there. And one more word about the mean absolute deviation. Like I said, it is basic, it tells us the average distance of data values, data values to the mean, okay? So on average, these test results just differ by about one point from the mean, which was 13.6, mm, somewhere here. So on average, they differ by one point from the mean. Whereas over here, on average, the test results differ from the mean by over two points. Okay, so that's what I want you to remember and understand about this concept. I hope this was helpful.